Good afternoon. I welcome you this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We gather this day to celebrate, to celebrate a victory, where we know that Carol has moved on from this place to the place of eternal rest, welcomed home as a good and faithful servant. It seems odd to say celebrate, and yet if we believe, if we truly believe, we know that she is the victor, and we are the strivers. We hope that we can be truly as victorious as she has been. We celebrate the life, the gift that she was, she was given to us because Christ loved us enough to love us through eternity. Let me read these words. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not embarrass others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It never remembers wrongs. Love delights not in evil, but rejoices in truth. It protects, always trusts. But most of all, remember, love never fails. So we come this day to share memories, but to share thoughts and ideas, to share love. For Carol gave freely of her love to the family, to the friends, to those up here in church. But all in all, her love for Christ shone through everything she did. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we are here. We are here to celebrate, even though it sounds congru incongruous to say we celebrate here, but we do. Well, we know that Carol has served her time here well. She has moved on to be one with you through all eternity. She loved well when she was here. She will be loved well through eternity. So help us to remember the, the gift that she was, is, and always will be in our lives. Help us to remember what we have had, not what we have lost. For truly, in Carol, we have seen a demonstration of the love of Jesus Christ through her life to each one of us. So comfort us in our grief. Give us assurance that the emptiness in our heart will ultimately be filled with joy. For we are one with you in love, one with you in joy, one with you in asking the mercy and the love of Jesus Christ to celebrate with us this gift, this wonderful gift, the gift of Carol Harrington Petrosino to me, to those around us. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Carol Harrington. Joe used to tell me Carol was in the hospital and I'd go to find her and I'd ask at the desk, what room is Carol in? And they said, we don't have anybody by that name. No, because I was looking for Carol Petrosino and she was in the hospital as Carol Harrington. So I missed her, I think twice, did I not, Joe? <laughs> for the same reason. So Carol was born in Watertown, Wisconsin on August 16th, 1940. Carol went to be with her Lord on June 24th, 2021. I have a copy of information on Carol and I just, I found so many things that I found were really interesting. When she was growing up in Watertown, Wisconsin, did you know that she was first chair trumpet player at the high school? Um, hmm. She was asked to play for a polka band professionally. However, she chose to start her family instead. Carol became a CNA and was very good at what she did. Anybody that knows her, knew that she had a loving, giving, caring heart. So she made the perfect person to be in a medical position. She was so good at taking care of her patients that at one time, actor Telly Savalas, those of you who remember him, they, her family offered her a job to be the personal caretaker of his mother. However, she decided to stay in California instead of going back to New York with her family. 
But Mr. Savalas was so impressed with Carol and her loving bedside manner that when his mother did pass away, he flew from California, came back to California from New York and gave a special gift to Carol for taking such good care of her when she did. Now it's pretty amazing. So just before she retired, Carol bought her dream home in Fort Mojave at the community of Los Lagos, where she hosted many family members and friends. She's active at our church and loved to bring food to share for church functions. She always had an open table. Everybody and anybody was welcome. She was an outstanding cook and a collector of recipes, and she was never afraid to share those recipes with anyone else. Carol never forgot a birthday or anniversary and had a special way of making everyone feel warm and welcome. So if you ever came into Carol when she came in the service and sat right back there and you walked over and said, how are you doing? You'd think you were the only person in the whole wide world. She just had eyes for you. That's the way Carol was. That's the way I remember her. She loved to bake Christmas cookies and make fudge and mailing them out to family who would be able to eat them throughout the whole month of December. She's a good friend to many and she kept many lifelong friendships. How many of us can say we've had friends for over 60 years? That's amazing. She loved to dance. She loved to laugh. She loved to rummage and go antiquing even before that was a big thing. She believed in charity. Yeah, okay, philanthropy? Yeah, philanthropy, that's the word. And giving back to the community and remained active to both the loyal order of the Moose and the ladies VFW until she passed, serving on many com committees throughout her 35 years of service. Carol is survived by her wonderful, loving husband and partner of 32 years, Joe, whom we all know and love. There's eight children in her family, 12 grandchildren, two great-grandchildren, and five great-great-grandchildren. That must have been one heck of a Christmas, wasn't it? <laughs> okay. And she also had, because I'm an animal lover, she had a sweet little calico cat named Spunky. So I'm sure they all miss her very much. And I'm hoping that those family members that are here today will share some of their stories of Carol with us because we'd love to get to know her even more. She also wanted to make sure to include how much she loved and adored and missed her nieces, Ellen, Sharon, Susan, Lauren, and her nephew, Butchie, who she developed and maintained a very special bond with when their mother, passed, who was Carol's sister, passed away. So we thank you. Carol, we thank you, Joe, for bringing Carol here, for being her faithful husband. We miss her smiling face, and God rest her soul. Thank you. Well, according to my program, we will now sing Amazing Grace. We'll sing the first two in the sixth verse. You don't have music? Well, sing if you can. <laughs> Everybody knows the first and last. Let's do the first and the last. Okay. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved us. Like me, I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. When we've been there ten Shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. I know you have memories. I know you have thoughts, I know you have glimpses, and I hope you'll share with us now a memory of Carol, a meeting, a time. 
We'll bring you a microphone, if you will. Anyone? Jeanette, you want to come up? So I'm Carol's oldest daughter, and uh, a memory that uh, I have that's very dear to me is um, with my job, I traveled a lot. I would leave on Sunday, come back on Friday. Some, some years I was gone 26 weeks out of 52. And, um, but when I would be in a restaurant anywhere in the country, and I'd be by myself oftentimes. And I could always pick up the phone and call my mom. And she always answered, which was just amazing to me. And it, it always made me feel good and comfortable because I, I didn't really feel alone at that time. And there's something only your mom, you know, you can only say certain things to your mom and, and feel that way. And uh, I will miss that. I don't travel as much anymore, th thank goodness, but um, very special memory. Thank you. Anyone else? I remember one day I ran into Carol at the grocery store and we were talking about how expensive everything was and she goes, you know what? I used to be able to take a dollar and stretch it so far it would come back and hit me in the face. <laughs> I would like to thank Joe and Carol for all of the things that they have done in their pantry for almost 14 years. As long as I have yeah. been there, I love them. They have done immense work for us. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm first service and Carol was second service, but I always stayed long enough to go greet her when she arrived and sat in that back row and catch up with her and uh, went to a couple of parties with her. But uh, what I most enjoyed about Carol was that she was always such a lovely person and so friendly and genuine. And uh, to uh, have her suffer was just painful to even think of. But she is now up there with God, and we are glad of that. Back, you got one? Janet's got it. I'm proud that Carol chose me as one of her friends. We talked on the phone a lot, and whenever she went to end the conversation, she would always say to me, now you stay well, and God bless. I'll remember those words forever. I'm her son, Steve, and when I was in basic training in the service, I was having a hard time and I wrote a letter to her and said, uh, I think I'm gonna quit. And she said, you never quit anything before. So that gave me the spirit to keep going. And uh, the other thing I remember is when I'd come to visit her, she'd always make me chilly. And I'd tell her, I'd say, your chili is made with love. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? You realize if you don't talk, you're going to hear me sing. <laughs> that ought to get somebody speaking. That's a, that's a warning, so I don't remember what we got on here, but I better look. I know. In the Garden, many of you know this one, so sing along with us. i got to find it. Don't, don't play yet. I'm not ready. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Well, let's start again. Okay. I 
come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever And the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever I'd stay in the garden with him, know the night around me be falling, but he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling, and he with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever Carol Harrington Petrosini was a member of this church, was a member of the community of Los Lagos, was a musician, was a caretaker. Oh, I could go on with those kinds of things. But I'm reminded of, of a verse in the Bible that we refer to every once in a while. Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, you know I do, Lord. Then feed my sheep. And again he said, Peter, do you love me? He said, you know I do. I would love no other than tend my lambs. Can't you hear this? And Jesus said, Carol, do you love me? And she said, of course I do. He said, feed my sheep. Oh, not, we had, we had so many great examples that back in the good old days when we had potlucks and we had food every Sunday and we had, and the food was just fantastic. And, and when it came from the Petrosini household, it was huge. <laughs> Some people brought a dish, they brought a meal. But that isn't the only way that she fed his sheep. Somebody mentioned sitting back there, and she came to church in pain because it was important to her to be close enough to Jesus to love him and to be loved by him. I disappointed her often, and yet every time I 
got in face to face with her, she was so gracious and so forgiving and so loving that she just rebuilt my spirit. Yeah, I can hear. I can hear the boy saying, Carol, do you love me? And she said with her whole being, with her whole life, with her whole attitude, of course I love you, Jesus. Feed my sheep. And she fed us not just with food. She didn't put on the pounds. No, she put on love. She cared about each and every one of us. She said, God bless you. She said, take care of yourself. She said, how are you? And meant it. Do you love me? And Carol said, of course I do. With my whole being, with my whole absolute, complete, total personage, she loved the Lord. And it hurt to see her suffer. Yeah. But she knew suffering because her Lord had suffered for her. But I can almost, I can almost hear that conversation. And it strikes me every time I think about it that she was one of those who did exactly what Jesus asked. She fed every person around her. Even, even, in, her time, even in her times with hospice, she fed the pastor who came from the hospice organization. She blessed him every time he came, just as she blessed me every time I came. She didn't hold back. She didn't hold grudges. Now, she's a little Italian, so she may have gotten a little fiery every once in a while. But the wonderful thing about people who fire up quick is they cool down quick. They not only fire up in anger once in a while, but they fire up always in love. God, it must have been interesting, Joe, to be married to her for 32 years. I'm sure we can count on one hand the number of arguments you had in any one month. <laughs> I can see her in the seats back there. Some days hurting so bad. But she needed to be where you were, where you were, because that's the way she could feed your spirit with her spirit. Because her spirit never died, her spirit never hurt, her spirit never shrunk. It always stayed full blast. Carol, do you love me? Lord, I love you with my whole being. And in doing so, she loved every one of us, totally, absolutely, completely. She couldn't cook enough to keep us all full. She couldn't hug enough to keep us all content, but she gave it every bit of effort that she possibly could. So we celebrate this day that we have been loved by Carol, who was taught to love by the Lord of all. And trust that if he says to us, Gene, do you love me? Oh, I can hope that I can say it with all of the, all of the honesty and the integrity that Carol replied, with my whole being. With my whole being. I can't. I can't say any more wonderful thing about her than that she loved back just as she was loved. She understood the source of love and she returned it to everyone who needed it. She shared herself, her soul, her whole being. No holds barred. Oh, I'm so happy. She loved me. I'm so happy that she loved Jesus. And I know when he asked, Carol, do you love me? He knew the answer. He knew she loved him. Amen. I'm going to read this hymn. We'll sing the third verse, but we'll read this one. In the bulb there is a flower. 
in the seed and apple tree. In cocoons a hidden promise that butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be. Unrevealed until its season. Something only God alone can see. There's a song in every silence. Seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness. Bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future. What it holds, a mystery. Unrevealed until its season. Something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning. In our time, infinity. In our doubt, there is believing. In our life, eternity. In our death, a resurrection. At the last, a victory. Unrevealed until its season. Something God alone can see. We are different than we would have been if Carol had never entered our life. We are different because she loved us. We are different because we have learned to love. We are different because we can find peace in knowing she has found peace. So I invite you to go from this place in peace. Go to a place where you share memories and laughter and joy. Let your hearts be filled with the joy that Carol bestowed upon us all her life and let the joy of being loved by Jesus Christ fulfill you this day and all days. Amen.